Hey, what's up guys? I'm Michael Bryan, and in this video, I wanna show you two different hybrid smartwatches, which are both kind of similar, but at the same time, take a totally different approach to what a hybrid smartwatch should be. So right here I have with me the Fossil HR hybrid watch and the Garmin VivoMove Style. Now I reviewed both of these individually, but in this video I wanna break down the differences between the two to help you decide if you wanna get one of these, which one is the right one for you. Because honestly, they are very different in quite a few aspects. I would say the Garmin watch is a little bit more like if you're trying to take a regular smartwatch and tone it down, you'll end up with something kind of like this. And then Fossil took a totally different approach and kind of went to a standard watch and beefed it up. So they're both, they're kind of meeting in the middle, but the Fossil has a way longer battery life and an e-ink display, whereas the Garmin has a touch screen and an AMOLED display, but a much shorter battery life. And some of the features are really, really interesting how different they actually are. So I wanna start off with a mechanical tour of these two devices, just to kind of show you guys the differences between them and what it feels like when you have them on. Now, you'll see they're both approximately the same size with a couple fundamental differences. The first being that the Fossil Watch has three buttons on the side and the Garmin has no buttons at all. So the difference in that also relates to the controls for these. So because the Garmin has no physical buttons or dials or anything that moves on the outside, no actuation whatsoever, everything you're gonna do is through the touchscreen. So you rely very heavily on the touchscreen for this watch, whereas the opposite on the Fossil side, it doesn't even have a touchscreen. So everything you're doing is with the three buttons. So you have all three of them are just push buttons. The middle one looks like a crown that you would turn, but you actually, you don't turn it. They're all just plain buttons. And then it does have some other kind of hidden controls. So if you double tap the screen, even though it's not a touch screen, I think it kind of works based on pressure right there. And it'll turn on four LEDs behind the watch for some nice backlighting. And then you also have the ability to like flip the watch with your wrist and the wrist gestures can make the hands turn around and it'll make it easier to see whatever's on your watch face. So besides just touch screen, not touch screen, the actual displays themselves are fundamentally different between these watches. So the first, looking at the Garmin, it's an AMOLED screen, so that means you're going to have variable brightness. It also has adaptive brightness, so if you're in a bright setting, it'll turn up, it'll turn back down if you're in a dim setting, so you should see it in most different settings. Now, it also has multiple colors on there, but it's slightly lower resolution than what you might expect from a standard smartwatch. So overall, the screen and the display on the Garmin looks really nice. Now, one small issue, though, is that the hands don't have any kind of LEDs lighting them up and they don't glow in the dark. So if you're in a shadow or in a dark environment, you're almost definitely not going to be seeing what time it is unless you change the watch face to actually show you the time, digitally on the AMOLED screen, I mean. Now, the Fossil Watch, on the other hand, uses an e-ink display, which means that it's always on no matter what. And so if it's always on and you don't have to spend energy to keep it on, that means that you're essentially going to have a much longer battery life on this, somewhere on the order of like 12 days. Now, you would think that this watch would be harder to see in the dark and you'd be easier to see the AMOLED screen in the dark, but honestly, it's kind of the opposite. So yes, you can see the AMOLED screen in the dark, like I said, you can't see the watch hands on the Fossil though, you can see both in any setting. So if it's extremely bright, it's actually easier to see an e-ink display, obviously. It's kind of like looking at a piece of paper. The brighter it is, the easier it is to see that. And then in the dark, you have those four LEDs making it easy to see. And then on top of that, really nice touch on Fossil's part. So props to them for making the hands glow in the dark. Now, looking at the rest of the hardware on these watches on the back, you'll see that they both have a slightly different looking heart rate sensor, but ultimately they do both have two heart rate sensing diodes. So they should have a relatively similar accuracy with their heart rate sensors. I will test that out later on in the video and show you guys for sure, but that's essentially the primary input they'll be having when they're tracking your body activity. Now, they also have pedometers on board. And speaking of sensors, the Garmin actually is able to use connected GPS GPS, meaning if you're going for a run, it'll use your phone's GPS to track where you're going. The Fossil, unfortunately, does not do that. And so when you're not connected, if you don't have a phone, they both use a pedometer, but one extra plus for the Garmin, which is kind of where I start to lean over to, towards 
The Garmin's a better one if you're trying to do any kind of fitness, and this is another reason right here. The pedometer is actually adjustable. So you can say you can set your actual stride length and it can record obviously how many steps you take and translate that more accurately into distance when you're not connected to your phone. And of course, if you upgrade this to the Lux, like I said, it's an extra couple hundred dollars, so pretty significant upgrade there, but you will be getting GPS with that watch, whereas you don't get it with this one and you don't have any GPS options at all with the Fossil HR. So a quick aside, I've actually been wearing both of these watches simultaneously for the past week on the same wrist. And so in public, you look like an absolute fool. Nobody wears two watches. So I got some weird looks. I got some people asking me why I was wearing two watches, but I did it for you guys to make this video to really have a thorough in-depth analysis of these watches. So if you enjoyed this video, please remember to like and subscribe. I have a lot of really exciting videos coming out in the next couple weeks. So if you don't wanna miss those, make sure you click the bell icon and the subscribe button down below. Now, one last thing to note about the mechanical aspect of this is the overall weight of these is significantly different. Now, the Fossil HR feels like a standard watch. It feels a lot like any other Fossil watch I've ever held. It's kind of a little bit heavier, feels you know really strong, really sturdy, it has a nice steel back right there. The Garmin, on the other hand, is extremely light, which I think might be a plus, but maybe for some people, they might think this is a little bit weird. It might feel cheap, but essentially, like I said in my original review, it's because it's an all aluminum body, it's a relatively thin aluminum body as well, and you don't have any physical buttons, so you erase all of that mechanical architecture on the interior, meaning that you really, you have a very light design because there's really not a whole lot there. It's just like a PCB, a display, and a touch screen, and that's basically all you have. So that's why this is especially light. If you want a lighter watch, this one is a pretty good light watch. I really don't know of many watches that are lighter than this one right here. So I mentioned the battery before, and this is honestly a massive difference between these two watches and could really be a, a, a major point in deciding which one you wanna buy. So the Fossil HR lasts anywhere from 11 to 13 days. I've been wearing it for a month and it really lasts just an impressive length of time. When it dies, you'll know that it dies because on the e-ink display, it'll display 0% and it'll just kind of freeze wherever the hands are. Now the Garmin on the other hand, usually lasts approximately five days. Of course, depending on the brightness of the AMOLED screen and how long or how frequently you have it on, it could last you know, shorter or longer, but for me, it's somewhere around five days. So as far as connectivity goes, these both connect by Bluetooth to your phone and being hybrid watches, they don't have Wi-Fi, they don't have 4G LTE, they don't have Bluetooth to connect to earbuds, but they do obviously use Bluetooth to connect to your phone. And the Garmin actually has one extra transponder in there being NFC. And so NFC means that you can do NFC payments. So Garmin Pay on here is, you know, conceptually similar to like Apple Pay, Samsung Pay, you know, you just tap your watch against like a vending machine or something and it'll pay with your credit card connected through your watch. They kind of differ a little bit with music controls. It also has song, you know, skip, pause and previous song. And you also have volume controls on there. The Garmin slightly not as convenient because it doesn't show you like the title and the artist. It just kind of shows you the title in a scrolling window and you can skip forward or backward. A big limit for the Fossil HR, unfortunately, is the notifications. Now, some people see this as a big drawback. You can only have maybe 13 different apps that are predetermined to cooperate with this watch. And I, I'll list them up on the screen right now, but any other apps that you want to use and get notifications, you can't with this watch yet as of right now. Maybe they'll release a firmware update eventually, but for now, they just don't cooperate. Another big plus for Google Fit users is that the Fossil HR works really well with Google Fit. It kind of almost forces you to use that. When you set it up, it says, do you want Under Armour or do you want Google Fit? And it sends all of your health data that way so that when you connect, it'll automatically track your heart rate and it'll do everything, your sleep tracking and stuff like that and record it in Google Fit. Now, like I said before, as far as fitness watches go for between these two, I would say the Garmin seems to be better. The Garmin app also, in my opinion, is better at recording what you're doing in a day. So they have really interesting analytics. I showed you in the original review, and maybe I'll pop it up on the screen right now, what the app looks like. You have kind of a feed layout and you have a lot of different stuff in there that you can learn about your body battery and figure out maybe like, are you coming down with a cold? Are you sleeping well enough? Are you drinking alcohol? And is that affecting your sleep? And stuff like that, as I'll be testing this out throughout the month, but it looks like as of right now, the health analytics are pretty good on the Garmin watch.
So as far as software goes, you have a couple different things on these watches. So on the Garmin, you can actually track distance, obviously, because you have connected GPS when you are connected to your phone. Otherwise, you'll be using the pedometer. You have calories on there. You have sync. You have a hand adjustment, which is nice. If the hands somehow get misaligned, you can adjust them and make sure that the servo motors are correctly lined up behind there. Uh, then you have a timer and a stopwatch. You can kind of do that on the Fossil HR as well. Um, you have a, a wallet, obviously, being how you can pay with this watch. You have rep tracking if you're working out. So both of these do have workout tracking, but the Garmin, of course, having rep tracking and also having that connected GPS means it's going to be a little bit better as far as workouts go. So this also has more in-depth weather. So if you, both of them have weather, of course, but if you go into the weather on the Garmin, because it's a touchscreen, you can go down and open up uh, sort of a little bit more of an in-depth interface right there where they show you today's weather, tomorrow's, and the next day's, as well as the high and low temperatures for each of those days. So it is a little bit more in-depth right there if you're interested in that. The Garmin also shows you heart rate stats and you know breaths per minute, your stress, your body battery, how many floors you did. Uh, and meaning how many floors you went up and down today, and then how many active minutes you had this week. And all of that, if you tap on it, it can go down and show you a little bit more information about it. So a little graph of your heart rate maybe, or like maybe a breathing exercise if it thinks you're stressed, and so other things like that. Now, the Fossil Watch only kind of has those three buttons, which means you only have three different options at a time, and you have to reprogram within your watch or within your phone to what those buttons do. So one of them can be like music controls, one of them can be notifications, the other one can be like a daily summary, or it can be like your exercises. So there is plenty you can do with the Fossil HR, but it's not all accessible from the watch in standalone mode. So now I wanna go and test out the workout feature with these watches and see how they actually compare. And also I wanna test out the heart rate sensors on both to see which one is more accurate. Okay, so today is overcast. It's been overcast for a while, but you can still see both of these watches in daylight right now. The Garmin's very easy to see. I would say the Fossil is easier to see, especially because the glass on the Garmin is actually a little bit shinier. All right, so I just ran 2.1 miles. As you can see, my hair's all messed up. Sorry about that. But looking at the watches right now, side by side, so I wore both of them on the run. I was known 2.1 miles is how far I ran. And the Garmin pretty much got it right on the money. And again, this is not with connected GPS. This is not even with calibrating it. Just based on my height, it got 2.11 miles, which maybe that's a coincidence, but I think that looks pretty good for how accurate this is. So even if you ran and it wasn't that accurate, you could always calibrate it based on how far you're running. Um, and it also had my heart rate was, I think, pretty accurate. So if we can go through here, it shows you a lot of analytics, your average speed, your total time, your heart rate, your max heart rate. I don't think I quite got up to 174, but I'm sure it was up pretty high. Now, the Garmin interface itself was pretty easy to use. Now, when you flip it up, you'll see that it shows you uh, like a little kind of graph of what your heart rate is and kind of shows you the zones of where you want to be working out, where it's a little bit too much, where you should be working a little harder. And then on the bottom, you can see the calories. You can see how long you've been running the distance, your heart rate, you can see some basic stuff like that. The hands are just showing you the regular time. Now Fossil on the other hand, the hands also show you the regular time and you get three little things on the bottom that are kind of hard to see that show you uh, just some analytics about your runs, like your heart rate and stuff like that, the distance. And then at the top, they just show you how long you've been running, like a rough number though, just says like 19 minutes. It doesn't show you like the seconds too. But okay, so in the Fossil app, it's a little trickier to find this. You can also find it in Google Fit, but it says right here that I ran 2.01 miles, which which is still kind of close. You're within a tenth of a mile there for how long I actually ran. It says my average heart rate was 121, even though on the watch when I was running, every time I looked, it said like 75 or 90. So I don't know if it was just showing like a lagged number from when I started or if the numbers being recorded were not what was shown on the screen for some reason. But regardless, I think that actually it did have a pretty high max. So I'd say that like these both have okay heart rate sensors. I think the Garmin's seems to be more consistent. Um, the Garmin obviously does a better job with tracking your distance. Now for this one, they both counted a lot of steps and it just happens to be who estimated my stride length better. But the thing about Garmin is you can actually fix that and customize it. So if they estimate incorrectly, you can adjust that. All right, so that was a lot to talk about right there. Breaking it down in a little bit of a summary right here, which watch is actually best for who? So starting with the Fossil Watch, I think this is best for anybody who's starting to become like a minimalist, trying to cut back, do a little bit of that digital detox type of lifestyle there, where you want something on your wrist to really simplify things, uh, make you not have to look at your phone as much, and overall not be any kind of a distraction. So this is not really gonna be the best watch if you're trying to 
Keep a really close eye on your health, but it can be useful just to track your heart rate or track basic exercises and just keep the fundamentals of what maybe a smartwatch would be and have something more aesthetic than maybe like a Fitbit, like a little Fit Band or a Samsung Galaxy Fit, right? Like this does kind of the same stuff as that, but it looks a lot better. Now on the flip side, if you want something that is a little bit more aesthetic and is essentially just a slim down version of a smartwatch, I think the Garmin is a better choice there. Of course, it is a lot more expensive, but you do have NFC payments on there. You have a touch screen and you have a lot of different widgets on there. So more functionality on the Garmin than you have on the Fossil. But ultimately it comes down to what you care more about. Maybe you don't care about stress tracking. Maybe you do care about music controls and maybe you care a lot more about price. So the Fossil is about $200 when it was brand new right now. Maybe it's on sale when you're watching this and the Garmin is about $350. So significantly more expensive for the Garmin Maybe that means that you're more interested in the Fossil. I don't know. It's a toss up, guys. I think both of these are really impressive watches. I like both of them. Personally, I'll probably switch between them every couple days, but let me know which one you like best and why in the comment section below. I'm really interested to hear what your opinion is and why you think that. As always, thank you all for watching. Thanks for watching this entire video. I'll see you in the next one.